Let's get started. Uh, just do the talk. Uh, I phone me. I phone me not. And I love that the, the, the screen's over here, so it's like I might actually just run down, or I don't know. I, I will definitely fall on this thing at some point, so just take the fall. Uh, but here we go. Um, what it is I'm talking about is like the three things that I love to do when I'm off the lot. Uh, I'm attacking a uh, uh, bargain. Uh, my, my client, when I'm attacking, uh, auditing my client, whatever you want to say, right? Whenever I'm testing them, you know, there's three things I love for them to do uh, because it makes it easier for them to survive. Uh, and then also the three things I hate for them to do because it's harder for me to rob. So, uh, and this, but I always, I, I've been lately noticed that I like to see it. Uh, uh, I don't know, like, I, what I call the dessert vegetable sauce. So it's like I start off in the dessert stuff, up to the dessert table stuff, and like, okay, they got you here. And then at the end, I'll just bring it to you, and it's like, lately, that, that you know, old man shot that wild moment, uh, and it uh, goes from there. And I actually came this close to adding that last night, and like, uh, instead of having another drink, it's just a fuck about that. Uh, but it's really like the old man shot that wild. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, everybody else is shot that wild right now. Uh, so we'll just go with the, uh, filter, yay! Uh, but, I mean, we got it. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, let's get started. This also, I'm very sad about Derby Thomas. Uh, it's like this. Uh, I always tell people when I'm straight up on this, it's like Derby, uh, Def Con, uh, before I found my happy friend, it's like, uh, that was about 15 years ago. Uh, and it's like where I actually said, Derby Con has been there for me. Has that quiet moment where it's like after the death, after the hectic, after the chaos, after all the stuff that goes on, it's like that was like, that was like the end. It was like that, and I just want to see that that uh, gang was still uh, a fan of here, and I just want to see that it was longer. Uh, and I had to do so. So I want to thank you for that. This is the least important slide in the talk, but. There, um, uh, there's a guy who contacted me, and but uh, I, I do think my grandma's cool. I, uh, I've done a show, uh, one because you know, I got a few minutes in the next time, uh, and I've been on the news, and uh, but most in the lower left hand corner is actual pictures of me lobbying because that's what I do, and like, uh, and there's a big distinction about what I do. It's like, you know, you always get this stuff about, you know, the red team, which is, I mean, I was like. I don't red team in my hair, I'm not a ninja. It's like, it's like, and I'm tired of all the stuff we're all talking about the ninja. It's like, I'm like, oh yeah, we use the advanced techniques, we use those this, we went through the skylight, we put the other, it's like, you know, I'm going in, it's like, I'm honest people, and it's like, I'm just going to punch it in the faces and check their plans. I'm like, that's awesome, and that's very technical. Nice but I'm like, can we just go in and just rob people? You know, it's like, just walk in and steal stuff. It's like, because this that's your biggest threat vector, not, you know, uh, you know, still, still team thick coming in through the gutters and it's like coming in through the, 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 the face the closet and you like, you know, it's a lot of you. It's like, and then they're like, yeah, I can do this, I just got a great visual, still team thick coming in and they're like, excuse me, boom, yes! It's like, mission accomplished. There's a banner and over here. Okay, no, no, probably not. Okay, so, um, uh, I'm tired of that because Basically, it's the lower right hand corner, right? That's what most of the attack, that's your biggest threat vector. That's what you need to worry about. Why are you worrying about, it's like all these big advanced actors. You got MSO 867 on your network. You're worried about old day? Hash that 9,523 old day, okay? It's like, that, that's, a, it's like, I, I, I've, I've said it so many different times. I think mean, that's why say it. It's like, we're, you people, you got, Sure, people that are talking about low hanging fruit. Why do we keep talking about low hanging fruit? Mother, the fruit's on the ground. Pick that stuff up. You'll get to the branches eventually, okay? But pick that stuff up first. I'm telling you, that's just serious. It's like, let's, let's start talking about that stuff. And I understand. It's like, I was on Blue Team. I prefer Blue Team. Blue Team is awesome. It's like, cause I love, there is no bigger satisfaction than having someone try to attack you, someone, some criminal actually trying to get to your network go, oh, I thought that's how I was doing it. That's why I thought, you know, that's fun. It's like, I love doing 
that. But then you got to talk to you got to deal with the corporation because you know this is what they want. On the left hand side, that's what they're saying. Hey, we need this. We need the fortification. We need a firewall. It needs to be big and huge. You know, APCs are going to pay for it. It's like it's like well, it's like we got we got to make it bigger, stronger. And they're like, and you're like, yeah, I'm right there with you. How are we going to fund it? Oh, uh, well, we got enough to fund the thing on the right. Uh, we'll make it bigger and stronger and, and, and do it. So it's like that's our problem, right? That we're dealing with. It's like we're like we're we got all this like you know what we're ideal we're supposed to be, but when it comes down to it, it's not so much on the back. So it's like so this feels like we're done really fast. Let's start talking about this common thing that I think that we can fix now. And, and, and so that's what this is supposed to be about. One of the main things that I love more than anything else, okay, is uh, employees not empowered or educated to question your decisions. That's amazing. That is so awesome. You know, everybody's got that, you know, Bob and John. I was on a job at the end of this year, and like, and I was doing this uh, this building, a high rise building. building. There's only been one thing worse than no security, and there's only one thing worse than that, and that's the wall. And it's like I love Robbie's office building because it's so hard to get lots of stuff. There's lots of things that are hard, and I've got to deal with it. I, I literally have this occasion, and like on the day of the game, I got in with a printout. Of what the badge, the booster badge looked like. It's like, uh, it, it was awesome. So, they, like, the paper, they were folding this little bit. There's like a straight up hit map. So, uh, so I'm up there in this office, and I've got a, a good piece of job, or he's all this with a piece of paper somehow, too. Pretty cool. And, uh, and what I had, it looked like an iPhone charging case. And I went up to people, and I legit said, So, uh, so I got to plug this in and uh, test it real quick. I do not have a phone attached to this cable. So, and I'm trying to get caught. So I plug this in to their computer. Then, I could have done this in my pocket, but, you know, YOLO. I pull out the detonator. It's not really called a detonator, but it's not really called a detonator. It's like, so I pull out this detonator with an intangible box pedal, put a light on it, you know. And it's like, uh, and then I go and I push the button, so, boop, and it's like, uh, but it's like, so, boop, and all of a sudden, Notepad pops up on their screen, and it types, test, thank you, test, succeeded, complete, I completed, successfully, thank you for your cooperation, Miley emoji. Eight machines in the same section. Let me do that. I mean, after the first guy, he's like, Ooh, there's nothing attached to this cable. And then I just all the other. I go back. Like I said, I'm not racing. I did security awareness in case. After I Radar 
So uh, that's the way it's supposed to be. Don't have your body making it capable of doing the Because I would have Should have been monitoring that 
outbound connections. One of my biggest, bestest payloads on my uh, Bash Bunny and uh, Rubber Ducky is very simple. It opens up a command prompt. It telnet to tal.blinkylights.nl, and it runs ASCII Star Wars. That's awesome and horrible at the same time. Because really, think about this, does Bob and Accounting really need to have telnet access to the Netherlands? I am tired of seeing ASCII Star Wars on button open to Bob and Accounting people. But I'm tired of seeing ASCII Star Wars on their computers. But it's like a, it's like a, uh, uh, so, uh, there we go. That's the problem. You need to be monitoring what's going out of your network, not just telling people are actually hacking into your network nowadays. For real. Seriously. They're compromising your inclines to a, a drive-by download, uh, USB, uh, action or a click on a link or something that they, you told them to download and they downloaded it. So they can get you of the dancing hamster. There are your endpoints. So they're now just reaching back to the command and control and getting the rest of it, and they're doing that on a secure Epi connection. So maybe you should be having HTTPS traffic, you know, of over five megs going to Paraguay. It's like, but still, that's what you should look at. One of the things I do hate a lot is uh, dual factor authentication. The bad track is bad. But still, uh, dual back authentication, are you making sure that your employees are using it? It's like one of the things I like is uh, going to the banks, and they have dual back authentication on their computer. By golly, you're doing over a hundred thousand dollar wire transfer. You need this USB token. You can't just put in a wire transfer. That executive has to have their signed token do that. I'm like, you're right. That's awesome. Why is it always plugged into the laptop every time I go by? And, and if it's not in their laptop, I promise you, don't worry. Open it. And they're like, take some. It's like, so what are you going to do? What's going to happen? So it's like, well, I'm still up there. So I, I do that. It's like, that's a problem. It's like, if you're going to have to go back on this page, you've got to make sure you're doing it. It's like, how many people have to go back on this page in the badges? It's like, I got the boss one. That's like three feet of ponies right there from the RFID badge. I just cloned it automatically create a new badge from three feet away. So I've got your badge. You have a keypad that I also have to input with that match. And if you have the keypad, but but so if I see the uh, two more now, I see a four more now, I see a three more now, and then a one more now. And it's like you know. Place the keypad, make this number up. Four codes, four digits. That's 21 guesses. Four digit code is 21 guesses on a keypad. You block them out after three? Probably not. And I, all I need is one. So I don't get them. I'm not like, uh, it's like, it's like, I can be in the first Uh, and so, uh, that's what needs to happen. So make sure you use the factor and make sure you're not making it easy for the person to actually guess the code. I mean, if you got the budget to do that really cool page roll stuff, that's awesome. It's like, she probably does. Right? But it's like, uh, but maybe not everybody has that kind of budget to have those kind of things. I can yeah. No, it's like, uh, uh, so let's talk about another thing. That I love people doing. I'm sorry, I'm not thinking it's like, it's like, if you're like me, it's like some of my friends probably have been there, but probably under a lot of circumstances, but maybe that's what you're talking about. So I don't know. Um, but let's talk about bad, um, uh, or bad procedures. And it's like the procedures aren't bad.
bad, but how important is this to happen? This is a great story. Of, uh, well, actually, it's a horrible story. Uh, this is a horrible story. A, an attacker kidnapped a woman and drove her onto a U.S. Air Force base in Nevada. Everybody's talking about storming the like Area 51 like it's a hard thing to do. This mother drove onto the base. With the kidnap victim. Do you know how they found him? She got away from him. She got the out of there. She rescued herself because obviously the, the Air Force wasn't doing it. This guy rescued herself, got to the uh, one of the guards at the Air Force base, said, Help, I'm being kidnapped. And their first question, I'm pretty sure I wasn't there. So I'm pretty sure, how long did you get here? It's like, who are you? It's like, it's like he just drove on. We can all agree the procedures may not have been done by a specific approach. If you think that the first time the Air Force Base is like far and pretty much, I love to see the movies uh, on the movies like how far the Air Force Base. Back in the 60s, in the height of, of, of the Cold War, a Russian spy got onto a U.S. Air Force Base in Germany. He walked up to a U.S. jet fighter, took off one of the newer missiles, put it in a wheelbarrow, and I really, I hope he didn't bring it, I hope he stole the wheelbarrow too, I just, just because, I just want to add that. So he took it into a wheelbarrow, I hope they ever grabbed that barrel, but I don't know. But it's like, so he put it in a wheelbarrow, wheeled it out to his car, and it's like, put it into the back car. of his car, puts a red flag on the tip of the missile because it's sticking out the car. And German laws are German laws. You don't have to know, okay? It's like, puts a red flag on the tip of the missile and drove it back to his apartment. He disassembled the missile in his apartment and shipped it piece by piece back to the homeland. Successful. It's like, he, he said it through the German post. It's like, he said it all got him. Uh, that was awesome. Really horrible. Uh, but it's like, so procedures, it doesn't matter what you write down. It doesn't matter what procedure you put in. If your employees don't think it pertains to them, if they don't think that it impacts their job in a negative way, if they don't do it, they won't. How many people can get fired at your business because they clicked on it suspiciously? Or a mission fail, and they not find the purpose. How many people in your uh, facility know that they could actually lose their job for that? Not many. But we still allow truck drivers to know that if they get in an accident, they can be fired. If you go to a porn site, you can be fired. You can cost the company $300 million in damages for it and not be fired. Unless you're CIO. But it's like, uh, but no, it's like you've got to understand that procedures can't just be in place. They have to be enforced for everybody, from the CEO to the mailroom. Because I promise you, if your executives don't think that it applies to them, everybody they report to doesn't think it applies to them, and then everybody they report to doesn't think it applies to them. So, what's the point to all this? There we go. Uh, and so, uh, so that's one of the biggest problems. Like, this is not just going to be about all the things that I think we're doing wrong or we've done. But what are some of the things that you can take back on Monday or Tuesday? Some of us should have to take Tuesday because we're going to be back next week and we're functioning. It's like that you can take back to work and say, are we doing this? Here's some questions that you should be asking. It's like that you need to ask yourself. And one is, Insider threat. Which one fits the bill? All right, government. It's like, but what? Because we always think that it's the one on the left. We all think it's that malicious insider. You know, that traitor. That spy. That person that, you know, bought some accounting that's just upset and pissed off and they're freaking out to take the government and they need to go elsewhere and they're going to take the office and all kind of things, right? It's like, those are the things that we worry about. But come on. You're overlooking one huge, bigger threat than that. This is a real issue. Look at the one on the right. That's Department of Homeland Security. Public.
publishing their GSA key onto the internet for everybody to see and copy. And if you think that that's not really happening, here's GSA key number two that Johnny Christmas is nice enough to, to launch. It's like uh, uh, Adrian Crenshaw also has all the sets as well that you can 3D print, download 3D print, and you too can own a pair of the uh, GSA key on. Does that make you feel more secure when you've got your, your, your tech luggage in the, yeah, me too. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, it could be your team of stupidity. It could just be an accident. It could just be that there's a bunch of key left. I had, I compromised the company until I got into the industry. You know how? Because I checked Wi-Fi before I went in. And I noticed the link to this router. It turns out one of their employees, executive, was being very unproductive at work. He was being unproductive because he had to go to conferences. And, and believe that, I, I know this is hard to believe sometimes it's executive. Okay? This could have been the same. It's like, uh, so he goes and he uh, decides, I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to stick this Linksys router into my conference room, plug the internet board into the corporate network, and that way I can have Wi-Fi in the conference room and still answer emails, still do my job, still be effective and proficient while I'm listening to Bob for on marketing. It's like, it's like, but yeah, I can do that. And so I was like, when I went in, it's like, well, I'm glad that the uh, scope of agreement already said that to start today, like it says tonight, or it's probably already been bought. I do that a lot. So, uh, and it's like, uh, like one of my biggest, my best two attributes in this job is clearly not skill, not professional, not education, and uh, poor work control and no shame and things like that. And that is how I do most of my job. Uh, and so I was like, and here's your readout of each of your servers and the people that you have most issues with and things that people look at. And you're like, and they, they found the guy and like you said, you need to get in touch with him. And he's like, no, I, you know, let's not do this. Um, so sometimes Stop narrowing your focus to things that is just going to be a fix on the network. Sometimes it needs to be uh, actually just a tool. Um, what's another kind of insider threat? Sometimes it's the response. This was a horrible example. Okay. So this was where uh, that uh, custom border agent patrol, you know, the media. Uh,
uh, Skynet and uh, Tony Stark to deploy badges over my badge on either side uh, to help you know, block the movement and also to be done quickly. And I was looking for questions from my users. And I actually, this is actually a good thing. I went back to that bank just recently, got in because I, I, I have I still have a badge and blessing to get through the alert. And like, uh, and I got up there and I was uh, and I was working. And one of the employees saw me in the lobby. And I go over there because I'm about to go meet with Sizzo. And he comes back. And he's just like, I don't get through, Jason. I'm like, you know, you're Jason. He's like, can I see your badge? Do you have a badge? He's like, I'm just like, trying to get the head number and stuff. He's like, I'm just like, And I was like, legit. Awesome. Yes, here's my badge. He's like, I am supposed to be here. He's like, I wasn't wearing it. This is the badge. He's like, here it is. And he's like, you know, it's cool. He's like, I could have made one of those. I had copies of that in storage. But he's like, but, but you checked, and that's good. So that's a good thing. So one of the things that we need to start understanding is your employees want to see your role. It's happened. Whoever had, you know, 45 minutes in or something like that, you've almost, you've almost there. Like, uh, so, uh, so people's social media profiles are their own. Okay, I like my life doesn't. I don't care. It's like uh, I've had my uh, CEO, uh, the CIO of a company, the bank I used to work for, literally like five or six years ago. I was in a actual, I actually started something a hug war with Dave Kennedy, uh, and Paul, uh, Paul dot com was our target for uh, Pository Security Week. He was our 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 target of affection. Uh, and we were hugging them awkwardly. It's like, because Dave was pulling my awkward hug thing. And I was like, no, Dave, you got the hug. I make it awkward. And, uh, but he started attacking, uh, I mean, hugging, uh, Paul like that. And so finally they, they topped it with like, you know, they were both topless and hung. And I was like, <laughs> so I'm at DEF CON and I literally, I'm at their booth and it's like, come on, come on, Paul, it's going to happen. So I take off my shirt. It's like, and I have bad body visibility, what issues anyway. But I take off my shirt in the vendor area. Paul takes his shirt off. That boy, was, he was prepared. He was wearing shorts. I wasn't. I dropped around. It's like, uh, took my pants off. And it's like, and then they lower the banner, uh, the hack naked banner, appropriate enough. Uh, they lowered the banner to cover our midriff. And here is these two grown. <laughs> Adult, I use that usually then. It's like awkwardly hugging with the banner. I get back from Vegas. First thing the CIO says, um, Jason, look out. What is, what is Jason? I think that uh, I want to come and have a purpose with you. You know, it's like a purpose with you. It's like, I was like, first of all, let me stop you right there. I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. So it's like, uh, and I was like, you just stop right there. It's like, number one, it's like, that's my personal account. It's a state personal. I don't do anything to jeopardize uh, the, the security of the company. Integrity and, you know, personality and culture. It's like, that's a whole other thing I don't care about. So that's not my issue. Okay, two, I have more followers than your bank does. And so I don't care about that either. So just, sorry, not sorry. Next. It's like, I'm not changing the uh, picture. But a lot of employees post too much information that could damage the security of your company. I mean, if you want to know why security people drink, go to Instagram. Search hashtag new badge or hashtag new job. It, it, I'm actually about to find it. I'm sorry. It's like, it's bad. It's bad. It's like, what are your employees giving away? I had uh, an employee on her Facebook profile, and I was not friends with her. And trust me, after the presentation, I was never going to be. It's like on her Facebook profile, she had her phone number and her home address on her public profile and her about section. That was freely available to the world. Very, very next picture on the, the slide, on the next slide, was a picture of her house. I'm not that creepy. It was from Google Street View, okay? It's like I didn't like, I wasn't that dedicated of a attacker to prove a point by going to her house and taking a picture for herself. And that would have been cool, though. But it probably been a little bit creepier. It's like, don't take selfies in third party's house. Uh, but it's like, that's an issue. Just educate your employees on how they're securing their, their social media profiles. Understand where it impacts them directly. Guess what? 
you'll take that security consciousness to work with you. They're never going to care about your data, but at least they'll start being more security conscious and they see something work and they'll report it. Uh, I feel so sorry for those guys. I apologize. I just see those guys struggling with that. So I'm gonna just talk to us as like this is this is bullshit. Everybody on the live stream is like finally I don't see that I just try to concentrate it on there. So the next thing you do is phishing is one of the leading causes of compromise, but your employees really take it seriously. I mean seriously. Seriously. Target lost three hundred million dollars. And that's not their fault at first. They got pwned by their uh, HVAC provider. You know how they got pwned? I kid you not. I read the story. I don't remember the guy's name because I, I try to block out the fact that it's just like uh And uh, he literally legit said, you know, that's not your name. That's what you tell your shareholders, okay? You know, everybody gets, everybody's getting hit by, everybody's PCI compliant. No, they're not. It's like, you know, you notice that? Same thing is everybody gets hit by APT. Advanced Persistent Threat. That sounds scary. Bob and Connick doesn't know that. You know? It's like, do you know what APT stands for, people? Adequate Fishing Technique. Done. That's it. They got an email. The mother clicked the link. Boom. $300 million later. That was probably about a idea. Let's not do that. Oh, wait. Need to let employees understand that's one of the most likely ways. Look, I don't care about the network. I legit don't. I don't know. I'm not skilled enough to come drop a database. I mean, I can drop fake, but no. But I can't drop SQL databases. It's like, I don't know how to do that. I just go into your server room and take your SQL server with me home. It's like, it's so much easier. It's like people talking about, like, well, you know, that technical chase. I love that. And I have hackers come up to me and they DM me and they spit to my face. They like to the, the, the insult me that way. They're like, you're not that technical chase. You're not very technical. I hit on this one. You're not. I, and I'm like, first, hold on, but you don't know what I do in my lab. It's like, no, this work is so well, sophisticated. It's still sophisticated. So I don't care what you have to say about that. Second of all, do I really have to? I walk into a bank and I and I literally walk into a bank and stolen a computer without even spending any money or something. That was not technical at all. But I got more data than you probably did when you try to go in through the firewall. So F that So don't let anybody say that you're not technical enough to do these things. That you you're technical as much as you want to be, you just feel like you can control what you do. Say so don't let anybody around tell you differently because that's some crap. Um, the next thing do you vet your security systems to make sure they are operating as intended? Want to create another example? NSA, all oh, those guys, it's crap. It's like, you know, the NSA, they were like, oops, our bad. It turns out we were collecting more data than we were supposed to. How did that happen? It's like, we don't know. Haven't you ever noticed that one of the biggest things that Facebook and the NSA have in common, or they always go when they make a mistake, it's always because they collected data, not less. Have you ever got a notice from that Facebook going like, I'm sorry, there was a mix-up and we made your account more private than you intended, so you may need to make that more public. No, that's never happened. It's like Instagram has never gone to you and goes like, well, we made all your private accounts even more private. It's like, no, it's actually that happens in reverse. They're like, oh, sorry, everybody's public, everybody can see you. Uh, you may want to take some things down of, uh, you know, I'm just saying this, that's what we were doing at that time. So it's like, yeah, that's an issue. It's like, so that's the same thing. It's like, are we better? Who here puts in a snort install on your network? That's a technical thing, right? Okay, good. It's like, uh, so it's like you put a snort install, and then you just, you're done. Woo! Done. Let's put those, let's run those default signatures. And, um, oh my God! What are all these noises? What's all this? Well, I'll just start all those things here. I got to run it. But that makes the PCI compliant, right? It's like, but it's not fine tuned. It's not going back. Are you going back and saying, have you actually isolated one of your machines? 
it's like, well, one of your machines and actually gone and said, let's put uh, ransomware on there. And see what it does. What's the price called out? Or our insulin protection stable. Or our AV stable. It's like, well, our firewall stable. Or our segmented network stable. But, it's, but will it do something? Will it give us an alert? It's like, are you testing your antivirus to make sure it's actually working? That it's actually alerting when you send something, you know what the activity looks like. That's why you have pen tests. Because you want to see what an actual attack will do, and you want to see what the alerts are, what triggers, what doesn't, what seems suspicious that you now know is definitely suspicious, and what not. Because another thing I hate, it's like we talk about the red team, is that these motherfuckers go around, you know, walking around like, Your only job is to make the blue team better. If you think that's different, you're wrong. It's like the only reason why the red team is around is to help build defenses. The only reason the red team is there is to make the security better once they leave and find the vulnerability and uh, work with the process. It's like all these people that put these red teamers on pedestals saying that they're like, oh, they must know what they're doing. They're red team. F that noise. It's like, thank you. Sorry. Wait till next year's talk. Next year's a straight rant. But it's like, uh, but still. I am tired of it. That's what the red team is about. And that's what you need the red team for. They're not there to break stuff. If they can go in there and break stuff, great. But if they give you a message support, or they go and tell you, oh, yeah, that's something really bad, you can fix that. They've wasted your time and your money. Their only job is to tell you exactly how you can fix it, what the remediation are, how it's supposed to work better, and what things need to be changed to make you more secure. Period. That's all their function. It's like, wow. Small bottles right now. But thank goodness that'd be the two. It's like, uh, what makes you you have to help you justify your budget and your actions. Spoiler alert, this is no leap of goodies. That's like all the way back to the old days. How many people here are trying to get money? Seriously, raise your hand. How many people here would like to get more funding from their executive? Oh, wow. That problem has been clear. Tom Dicker, iHeart, Nintendo, WannaCry, and Mark Murphy, but that's still around. Yeah, do a better job of letting your executives know what you actually need and what your stuff is doing. We always go to our executives and say, hey, it's like there's a really bad thing going on. It's like a, we need more money uh, this year than last year. Like, well, what happened last year? Oh, you didn't see anything. But it was bad. We fixed it, but you didn't see anything. And if you give us $2 million more, you won't see anything this year. Literally going into a bodega asking for the video, going like, is that a nice, is that a nice story here? Is this horrible something happened to it? You know, that doesn't work. That does not work. Show them metrics. Show them numbers. Give them pie charts. Everybody loves pie. Who doesn't love pie? It's like, give them pie charts. Give them something that we've had this many firewalls alert. We've had this many cases alert. And there are a lot, and they don't mean anything to them. But it's numbers. It's something they can base it on. And give them real numbers. This is how many machines we have in our network. This is quantifiable data. How many people here know how many machines you have in your network? Don't answer that because that's what you said. It's like, uh, it's like, but how many machines we have? How many, this is their current patch level. This is how we patch it. Those are metrics you should be using. Give those numbers to your executives. You'll have a better time trying to get a budget. And I have repeatedly said in this talk that I see this stuff is clear because I have a confession to make this year. It's like a, it was, this is like a, a, probably my tenth year giving talk. And you gotta notice something. Okay? I tried to say the same thing for like ten years. And it's like I say it different ways. It's like I try to be funny, but I'm gonna always have one common theme. I am always going to talk till 
you know, that windmill is gone and it's never gone. It's like your users are your best asset. Start effing acting like it and investing in them. Blinky boxes are great. I mean, they, they, they got blue ones now. It's like the blue light. That's awesome. Invest in your users. Start educating them. Getting them involved in your security team. That's where your return on investment is. I'm classy AF. I had the pinky up there. So, any questions? See, I think I got time for one. You guys show me a number. Fine. I'm not going to do that. I might just do that. Yes. If you had a question. Oh, someone was just trying to get laid. Did you have a question? Uh, he threw me a pity question. Like, oh, crap. That guy's like, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can use metrics that you're net, uh, working with your network team. You ask what kind of metrics you should be using. And your devices, your pretty blinky boxes, create really pretty reports. Start printing those out. It's like, but also add the real stuff, meat bones like that. Uh, take an actual inventory of your, your workstation. Figure out what their patch management system is and putting that in there. It's like, how many uh, spam emails that you get caught on the gateway? How many go into the environment? How many antivirus things? So work on that. So thank you guys. Have a great DerbyCon.